And breaking tonight, the Met Police say they are investigating comedian turned independent media star Russell Brand following a quote number of complaints against him. The development came as Brand launched a new episode of his live stream show on Rumble tonight. Incredibly important is the ability to hold the establishment to account. What is incredibly important is that you have independent media that doesn't just accept government narratives, but investigates, challenges mainstream legacy media narratives and government narratives. It doesn't even matter where politically they might lie. Brand has more than 1.6 million followers on the independent free speech platform, but his ability to reach UK supporters may soon be scuppered by new legislation. Under the hugely controversial online safety bill, which is due to become law next month, Canadian-based Rumble will be regulated by Ofcom because it's accessible here. Non-cooperation with Ofcom's strict rules could leave Rumble execs open to arrest if they came to Britain. Parliament's Cultural Media Select Committee, chaired by Tory MP Caroline Dynage, has already written to the platform to all, but demand they follow YouTube and stop brand making money from his videos. But what do you think? Is the online safety bill damaging to free speech in the UK? Dan at GBNews.com. Vote in our poll at GB News on Twitter. But now let me bring in Matt Letizia, Amy Anzel and Toby Young. So Toby, as the director of the Free Speech Union, do you have any concerns about what the online safety bill will do with these platforms like Rumble, uh, which are currently allowing Russell Brand to not only broadcast, but to monetize his content? Yes, I mean, I am concerned, but um, I think it's important that we shouldn't exaggerate the risk to platforms like Rumble of the new online safety bill regime. Um, there are protections in the online safety bill for journalistic content, for instance. Um, uh, and I think that Russell Brand might be able to claim that particular protection. Uh, in addition, you know, in its original incarnation, the online safety bill was very threatening because it was going to urge Ofcom to remove um, uh, lawful but awful content, legal but harmful content. And thanks to the lobbying of the Free Speech Union and others, that clause has now been removed from the bill. So I think provided everything Russell Brand said uh, was lawful under British law and provided there was some kind of age verification on, on Rumble, so there was no risk that children were going to view the content. There are much more severe restrictions for what f children are able to view and which Ofcom will enforce. But provided it was adults only viewing it and provided he said nothing unlawful, I don't think that uh, Ofcom could demand that Rumble remove him from the platform. And if they did, um, they'd have a free speech battle on their hands and the Free Speech Union would certainly go to bat for, Ru for Russell Brand in those circumstances. But Matt, let's just, yeah, you say that you're disgusted uh, with the government overreach when it comes to rumble. I mean, at the end of the day, there's no denying that Dynage uh, wrote this letter to Rumble, one of many media companies that she targeted, effectively declaring brand innocent before any trial and saying that he shouldn't be able to monetize his content. Oh, branding him guilty, I think you mean, Dan. Um, Pretty much, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I, I think for me, um, this is a form of communism. This is this is the government putting in place laws that are going to allow people not to challenge them. They're going to be the only people that are going to be allowed to spread misinformation because you're not going to be able to question the government when they bring these things in. And this is, for me, I, I believe this government, we've been infiltrated by rogue actors and they seem intent on destroying our nation and destroying the free speech in our nation. Matt, do you buy into this argument uh, that Brand was targeted now because he was challenging the establishment? Um, uh, I think anybody who challenges the establishment is getting targeted. You know, I, I've had it myself uh, over the last couple of years. So it seems pretty obvious to me that they are going after anybody that will challenge them. And these, these bills are being put in place. Uh, to obviously stop that from happening and stop people having a voice and challenging the government. And I'm sorry, but uh, in, a, in a democracy, that shouldn't be allowed to happen. Um, so the fact that I know Toby said that there's been some adjustments to the bill, um, but for me, this is still massive government overreach. Amy Anzel, free speech is under attack, isn't it? I don't think so. I think that it's pretty simple, Dan. I think that if Rumble just followed YouTube's lead and had community guidelines to help prevent 
fear, violence, and inciting hate online, it will be a much safer online community. And that's really what the bill is all about, as far as I can see. Online. It, I, Amy, Amy can I just, and, sorry, sorry to interrupt, I will let you continue, but can I just okay. pick you up specifically on those community guidelines, though? Because, for example, during the COVID pandemic, those community guidelines saw very credible people banned simply for saying that there were no health benefits for wearing a mask. Now that is commonly accepted, but they were booted off the platform as a result of that. I'm sure at the time they were talking to experts and that they were getting good advice. And that is what the community guidelines are all about. They're not just deciding things willy nilly. They are taking advice of experts and people in the in the community to understand government whether it's expert. beneficial, government be whether it's beneficial whether it's beneficial to the online community, because when something is uh, introduced to the online community, obviously it goes offline as well. But Toby, this is the risk, isn't it? Because myocarditis, for example, all of a sudden, you have all of these experts uh, coming out now, all of these months on and saying, oh yeah, actually the COVID, the COVID shot's really bad for myocarditis. At the time, if you said that on any of these platforms, you were booted off. So isn't that why Rumble deserves protection? Not because the, everything that they put on their platform is true, but because they are allowing the debate to take place and they're trusting their audience to have that debate. Yeah, and um, I'm reasonably confident, Dan, that unless the bill is made worse, uh, and it could be by the next government, um, so the regulations oh, yeah. could become Good. more onerous, or unless Ofcom may overreach, or various um, critics of platforms like Rumble might misinterpret the law and claim they should be held to a higher bar than in reality they should. But Originally in the bill, there was this requirement that platforms were going to say how they intended to uh, deal with health related misinformation, which is where people would have attacked when it came to drawing attention to some of the uh, health risks of the COVID-19 vaccines. But that's now gone. Um, I think you know there's a worry that um, social media platforms will create in their own terms and conditions various policies about the removal of misinformation, disinformation, conspiracy theories. And as you know, those are often just ambiguous phrases used to describe anything, you know, supporters of mainstream narratives disagree with. Um, mm. But th that language isn't in isn't in the bill anymore. No. I mean, what, what, per, a, but it's, a, it's a creep, down. though, isn't it? It's a creep. And we can see the creep. Yeah, there's definitely a creep. There's no question about that. And I think when we see how the online safety bill regime works in tandem with the Dig Digital Services Act, uh, which is an EU act, which yeah. does require platforms to remove health misinformation, for instance, th of course. Th th then we could get into much it, it, darker it's, waters. It's an absolute nightmare. Matt, can I just ask you finally what you think uh, the situation should be with Russell Brand? He's obviously facing serious allegations, but there is due process that is meant to be allowed in this country. Should he be able to earn a living? until he's found guilty of a crime? Uh, of course he should. Uh, that's the whole premise of our justice system is that you are innocent until you've been proven guilty. I mean, he hasn't even been charged with anything at this point in time. Um, so the whole thing for me is is, is quite nasty, actually, um, the, the yeah. fact that the government are, are pushing this bill through. At the end of the day, I believe that people should be allowed to listen to anything they want to and they should be able to make up their own minds. Trust the people to be able to take on information and decipher for themselves what is true. Because mm. at the end of the day, it, there's the, there was a saying that, that really that really got me, and it said, the truth does not mind being questioned, but a lie does not like being challenged. And I feel like this is what this government, this government does not like their lies being challenged, and they're trying to stop that from happening. Matt Letizia, Amy Anzel, Toby Young, absolutely fascinating debate. Thank you all. So what do you think? Has it's revealed that Russell Brand's host platform, Rumble, may be forced offline under new online safety laws? Would this be damaging to free speech in the UK? Lara writes, only state-approved free speech that aligns with the establishment narrative will be allowed. It's starting to look like George Orwell was a prophet and not an author. Goodness me, that's true. From Drudsby. Literally no one even heard of this platform until last week, but they all rushed to defend it with no idea what's on it. And Emma writes safety laws because people talk about the corruption and lies in the mainstream media. The irony. Your verdict is now in 87% of you say the online safety bill is a threat to free speech in the UK. 13% of you say it's not.